for our last wine, we're going to come back to Bordeaux. A little bit of a change. We're going to uh, finish with the Sautern. Um, this is uh, Chateau Lacoste, which is the second wine of Chateau Riosec. And I know Chateau Riosec has a special place in uh, Monsieur Chevalier's heart, <laughs> because before he took over as uh, manager of all the, uh, all the um, DBR properties, you uh, looked after this for nine years, I believe, exactly. as the managing director of, uh, of Riosec. Um, Sautern is very much a Bordeaux speciality. Mm -hmm. um, what makes Sautern? What is so special that makes uh, makes the Sautern? You know, in it all is? the the wines we we taste uh, before in the red, but also in the dry white wine we have in the, mm. in the company in the group, uh, there is one thing we are looking after the 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 disease coming in the vineyard, mm. and especially with the botrytis. Mm. Well, for all those wines, we don't need and we don't want any botrytis. Mm. And for the Sauternes, we need <laughs> the same. It's exactly the same, um, uh, uh, the same fungus coming, okay? Uh, botrytis cinerea, uh, but in different uh, occasions, and uh, terroir and so on, or you have a bad evolution, or a very good evolution. Mm -hmm. In Sautern, it's a specific place mm -hmm. where you have uh, not every year a very good evolution of the botrytis where we can create this kind of wine. I said not every year. Uh, unfortunately, 2013, uh, 2012, we didn't produce any Chateau Rio Sec. The, the evolution of the botrytis was not interesting and it was a disaster. Okay? Mm -hmm. But coming back to, to Chateau de Cosse, uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a blend of the different varietal, classic varietal of, uh, of Sauterne with uh, uh, Sémillon, the most important part, of course, Sauvignon Blanc, a uh, little part, and uh, Muscadel. The, the three varietal allowed to produce in, uh, in Sauterne. Mm -hmm. And depending on the vintage, we make a blend with the three or not, depending mm -hmm. on the quality of uh, each one. Uh, the, the harvest is made, of course, by hand, and uh, is not the, the same uh, selection from each plot of the vineyard. It's more day by day, depending on the evolution of the opportunity, so we can pick uh, in good or not so good condition mm -hmm. and make a, ferment, a specific uh, separate fermenting process in cask. Uh, and at the end, we taste all the different casks and we select the part to go into the Grand Vin, the sec second wine, and so on. Mm -hmm. But that's all technique. That's all In technique. fact, the most important what is, is to enjoy the wine. <laughs> the, well, and to find the real uh, capacity to, to, to exprime and to explain what is a sweet wine, uh, what pleasure you can have at any time of the day or the night. Uh, you can open a bottle of, uh, of uh, sweet wine of Sauternes, uh, you drink, uh, with your friends some glasses and if I want to say if the bottle is not finished you can put <laughs> back the cork put it back in the fridge and enjoy it day by day for a few mm -hmm. days it's the wine that uh, works, yes, that keeps yes, for a long yeah, time the, even when the it's possibility open. to be uh, to be stored in the with an open bottle without any problem. Mm -mm. And I think that's quite important for the restaurant trade to know as well, because yeah. uh, it's a wine that you can open and you can keep and you can serve it the next day or the, the day afterwards if you, yeah. uh, if you keep it cool. For so this sp special tasting, we open a half bottle of, uh, mm. of uh, Chateau de Cos to present also that we have some, but we have also uh, single bottles or magnums or double magnums. Mm -hmm. very, very Depending on how, how many friends you have round the table. We think very often in the Anglo-Saxon world about sauternes being a dessert wine, and we think about sauternes being served with foie gras, for example. What other, I, okay, I know what you're gonna say. Give us some other ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that the, the word dessert wine, mm -hmm. it's uh, really a disaster. No, it's a disservice <laughs> to the wine, I agree. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can serve and enjoy it the, the, the sweet wine and the sauterne at any time. Mm. Of course, there is the, the classic uh, service with the, the foie gras, which is very good all the time. It's a very French and classic uh, mm. evolution. But you have a, a lot of uh, any possibilities with, uh, with cheese, with uh, roast chicken, mm. with um, lobsters, with uh, I want to say with um, uh, Asiatic food, yeah. uh, spicy flavors, and the, the confrontation between uh, salt and sugar, mm -hmm. 
there is a lot of possibility to yeah. to to make a surprise for all your <laughs> friends when uh, you, you you like the sauterne and you 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 have to to make understand to your friends that there is a lot of possibilities to drink. Yeah, it's much more versatile wine than we very often yeah. give it credit for. Yeah. Uh, and with the with the sweetness <coughs> of this wine, you know, it's uh, easy to, to 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 start. Some people say that it's difficult to to start uh, an aperitif uh, with uh, sauterne because after that the red wine. No, it's a uh, you. It's it's quite. Depending of what you eat with, yes. after that you, are, you can have a lot of different combination, which is very easy to, uh, to accept. Yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure if you come back to these red wines after the sweet wines, you'll find that these red wines stand up very nicely uh, after, oh, yes, uh, after a sauterne. There's no, <laughs> no, no problem at all. I think what's very interesting about this, and, and a lot of people are put off sweet wines um, because they have certain preconceptions, but there's a lot of freshness in this wine. It has that acidity and freshness to it, which makes it so yeah. versatile. That's a, the, one of the difficulties of those kind of wine is to find the right balance uh, during the fermenting process between the, the, the alcohol level, uh, residual sugar, and acidity. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a, a good uh, uh, sweetness, uh, there is 138 gram per liter residual sugar, with can be considered as very light. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the freshness and the acidity mm -hmm. in front of that, you have something unbalanced, mm -hmm. too, too sweet, too fat, mm. and uh, not drinkable. Mm. So that's uh, the combination between the, the, the three varietal and a more uh, Sauvignon. Uh, it's very interesting to have in the, in the definitive blend. It gives it that freshness. Huh? That gives yeah. some uh, more fruit and, uh, mm -hmm. and freshness. But you can have more or less the same result with only uh, Semillon. It depends at what time exactly you, you pick. With the, the total noble rot or a part of no, noble rot and a part of uh, uh, good grapes. And, uh, well, it's a, it's a uh, Sauterne for me, it's a very, uh, very interesting estate where you can learn a lot of things. Mm even using in the red wine after that. Yeah, uh, it's a very challenging, very technical <laughs> wine. Yes, yes. Very technical wine. Thank you very much.